Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap that gives you a wonderful new kind of suds, presents... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship. When other friendships have been forgot, theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma! You know, when I went to school, I studied French, Spanish, and Latin. I always thought Latin was the most difficult thing to understand. Then I met my friend, Irma. Now, don't get me wrong, because me, Jane Stacy, I love that girl. It's only that she... Well, for instance, the other night I was reading the evening paper, and I said, Irma, honey, imagine a man 84 years old just became a father for the first time. And Irma said... 84 years? Gee, what a long honeymoon. (laughs) I'll take Latin every time. Right now, Irma's staring at the calendar. Her watch has stopped, so she's probably trying to figure out what time it is. Irma, what's on your mind? Oh, Jane, honey, I just checked the calendar, and do you know today is one year since we started rooming together? A year already? Oh. Gee, I can't believe it. Let's see. Oh, of course, the 1st of December. We'd both agreed to share this room. Mrs. O'Reilly said the rent would be $25 for the two of us, and you asked her to please make it 30 because you didn't know what half of 25 was. <laughs> Well, in those days, I was much younger, didn't know as much as I do today. Yeah, yeah, honey. (laughs) Yeah, you've come a long way. Oh, thank you. Uh, But, Jane, we just can't ignore an anniversary. Uh, We should have some kind of a celebration. I know, I'll buy you a present. Oh, no, honey, it's not necessary. I appreciate the thought, but you don't. I'll get it. Hello? Hello, Jane. Oh, Richard. Jane, would you mind doing me a favor? I'm away from the office, and I'm going to need some petty cash for this evening. So I've asked Peggy, you know, from the accounting department... Yeah. ...to drop $100 off at your apartment on her way home. Is that all right? Oh, sure, sure. I'll be glad to keep it for you. Oh, thank you very much. Now, I'll be by to pick up the $100 later. Bye. Bye, Richard. Uh, anything wrong, Jane? No, dear, it was Richard. He's coming by later. Let's see, now, what were we talking about? Our anniversary. Gee, Jane, remember the fun we had when we first moved in together? Ah, uh, I'll never forget it, Irma. We couldn't decide who would sleep in the bed by the window, so you tossed a nickel. It flew out of the window, was picked up by a fellow who was walking past. He brought it up to find out how big a reward we'd give. <laughs> yes, wasn't that a romantic way to meet my boyfriend, Al? <laughs> well, to me, it just goes to prove that if you don't hold on to your money, you can get into all kinds of trouble. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hiya, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. We were just talking about you. Ain't got no time for no chit-chat. Working on the hottest deal of my life. Oh, Al, not another deal. What happened to that wonderful process you had for removing the name from hotel towels? (laughs) Didn't work. Removed too much of the towel. In fact, was left with nothing but the name. But can't miss with my new deal. What is it, Al? Have an invisible ink for printing the answers in school books. Can only be can only be read with special glasses. But Al, won't the teachers find out? The glasses will only be made in junior sizes. <laughs> oh, Al, you're wonderful. Gee, Jane, is it any wonder Al's my everything? Don't worry, you won't always be that poor. <laughs> oh, please, Jane, don't insult Al on our anniversary. Anniversary? Chicken, is there something about us I should know? Oh, not me and you, Al. It's Jane and I. We've been rooming together one year today. Well, this calls for a celebration. Why don't you girls make me a dinner? (laughs) No, no, we want this day to be different. You eat out. (laughs) Oh, but Jane, Al is right. We should celebrate. I know. I'll bake a cake. Irma, please, please, no. Uh, Not that you're a bad cook, but when most people bake a cake, no one can jump up and down or the cake will fall. When you bake a cake, we all have to jump up and down to get it loose from the stove. (laughs) Well, I have a new recipe, and I'm going down to the grocer's and get some flour. I'd like to make an upside-down cake, but I don't know how to spell happy anniversary backwards. (laughs) Well, just spell it the way you always do, and you can't miss 
<laughs> All right, I'll, I won't say goodbye because I'll be right back. I'll just say Auf Wiedersehen. That's German for Gesundheit. <laughs> Great kid, ain't she, Jane? Oh, I think so. Of course, so many people wonder how I can keep living with a girl who thinks President Hoover invented the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and the DDT is a doctor of dentistry and teeth. And that Seabiscuit was fish bait. <laughs> but then again, I've never in my life met anyone with a bigger heart, with a greater warmth and an honesty of character than Irma has. I agree with you 100%. Why do you think I want to make her my wife? That's because she's got a job. <laughs> Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. <laughs> Hello, Jenny and Al. Hello, Professor. Come on in. Thank you. Hi, Professor. Jenny, I hope you don't mind my stopping by for a minute. You see, the steam in my room is terrible. Steam? I didn't know you had steam in your room. Well, I haven't had it very long, but Mrs. O'Reilly just came up for the rent, and she found I couldn't pay her, so she started blowing off. <laughs> and I refused to stay in the steam room. Oh, Professor. Now, listen, Jenny. In the steam room, you get a massage. And Mrs. O'Reilly rubs me the wrong way. <laughs> Where is my darling little Irma? Well, she went out to some flour. That reminds me. If Irma's going to make a cake, I'm going to go to the drugstore and get something to go with it. Ice cream? No, bicarbonate. <laughs> I'll see you later. Ah, that Jane's a great little kidder, huh? And by the way, Professor, the girls are celebrating an anniversary. It was just a year ago today when they moved in here. Uh, and what a ray of sunshine those girls have been. When they first moved in, I was sick in bed. And then Irma came up. She rubbed my head, held my hand, and sang little songs to me. You know, to this day, I can't enjoy music unless it's off-key. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, chicken. Back already? Oh, Al, look what I found on the street. A lady's handbag. Chicken... Anybody see you pick it up? Al, I don't like the way you said that. I told you I found it. I wouldn't think of keeping it. That would be dishonest. Chicken, you're in the clear. It's only dishonest when you find something before it's lost. Oh, Al. <laughs> we must find out who lost it so we can return it. A good idea. Let's open up the handbag and find out who is the owner. Okay, empty the stuff there on the table, Chicken. All right, Al. My, my, look at all the stuff a woman carries in her handbag. You know, it's the first five and ten cent store I've ever seen with leather walls. <laughs> oh, Al, this lady's handbag belongs to a man. What? Well, his name is right here on the watch, Ben Russ, probably short for Benjamin Russell. <laughs> no, chicken, let's, let's keep looking. My, my, look what she's got here. Hair nets, hair pins, hair dye, hair ribbons, hair shampoo. Well, we know one thing. She can't be a bald-headed woman. <laughs> ah, let's see. Cigarette case, lipstick. Uh-oh, this dame's a dangerous woman. Why, Al? She's got a driver's license. <laughs> and here's her name, Mrs. R.L. McLean. Gee, Al, look at all the money in this wallet. Yeah, and here's her address. Ardmore Towers... West End Avenue. Classy neighborhood. Probably wouldn't even miss the dough. Al, I'm surprised at you. Would you think of keeping this money? Uh, only for a charitable purpose. Chicken, did you ever hear of Robin Hood, the guy who took from the rich and gave to the poor? Yes. You think Robin Hood was a bad guy? No. You know anybody richer than Mrs. McLean? No. You know anybody poorer than me? No. <laughs> what do I have to do, learn how to shoot a bow and arrow? <laughs> no, no, Al, we must return it. Honesty is the best policy. Uh, don't you agree, Professor? Well, I can only talk from experience. Once I knew a poor street cleaner who found a wallet with $50,000. He took it home, and for three nights he couldn't sleep. His conscience was keeping him awake. Finally, he couldn't stand it any longer, so he took the wallet back to the rich man who gave him a reward. And he went home and slept like a baby. What'd he give him? Sleeping pills. <laughs> Is that the moral of the story? No, no. Then he overslept and lost his job. <laughs> you see, Irma? It doesn't make any difference, Al. We must return the money. Glad you came through, chicken. Was only testing your character. Wouldn't touch the money myself. However, if this Mrs. McLean is so rich... I'm quite sure there'll be a reward involved. So we have to handle it on a business-like basis. 
we got to make her think we're rich, too. Then she'll be ashamed to offer us a small reward. Sounds plausible. What are you doing, Al? Well, her number's on the card. I'm calling her. Oh, hello, Mrs. McLean, please. Here, Chicken, you talk to her. When I put on a high-class voice, they get wise too quick. But, Al, I don't know what to say. Well, say something ritzy. Uh, you were out walking your Pomeranian uh, because your butler was in the bath. You happened to glance in the gutter, and there was her purse. You got it? Got it. Hello? Mrs. McLean? Well, my Pomeranian went for a walk because I happened to glance in the gutter when my butler was taking a bath in your purse. <laughs> Hold it, chick. Here, let, let me talk to her. Uh, Mrs. McLean, did you lose your handbag? Oh, you did? Well, uh, will you please describe the reward? I mean, the, the, <laughs> the handbag. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh, that's it. Yeah, my fiance found the handbag, and we're prepared to surrender it. Yeah, yeah, it's sitting right here. Why don't you come down and bail it out? <laughs> oh, you're busy, but you'll send your secretary with the reward. Good, good. Yeah, we're at 8224 West 73rd Street. Oh, it's only a block away. Fine. Yeah, we'll be waiting for your secretary. Goodbye. Wonder how big a reward a dame like that'll come through with. Chicken, when she comes, I'll handle it. Hello? Irma, this is Jane. Oh, hello, Jane. Where are you? Well, I decided to pick up my cleaning, honey. Listen, has anyone dropped by from Richard's office? No way. Anything I can do? No, no. I better come home and handle it myself. Goodbye, honey. Goodbye. <gasps> Gee, I forgot to tell her about the reward we're going to get. You don't have to. She's got a rich boyfriend. <gasps> oh, Al. You know, I feel so good that we're doing the right thing. You see, Al... I want to be honest, and I want you to be honest, too. Then when we get married and have children, they'll be honest. Fine thing to look forward to, a family of street cleaners. <laughs> Speaking of street cleaners, I think I'll go up to that fifth-floor gutter I live in. <laughs> Goodbye. Pardon me, uh, where does Jane Stacy live? Oh, why, lady? Is something wrong? Oh, no, no, not at all. I'm from Mr. Rhinelander's office. I'm supposed to deliver an envelope here to him. Oh, I see. The apartment is 3B. Thank you. Come in. Hello, I'm... Tom. I know. You're the secretary with the money. That's right. Uh -huh. I guess you know all about this envelope with $100. $100? It, it, it's not the amount, chicken. It's, it's the thought behind it. We'll take it. Thank you, miss. And here's the handbag. Handbag? Well, nothing was said about a handbag. Just take it. Your employer knows all about it. Well, if you say so, I'll take it back to the office with me. Goodbye. How do you like that? Can't trust help. This Dame McLean sends her secretary, gives us the hundred bucks, and she don't even want to take the handbag back to her. Oh, Al, a hundred dollars of my own. Do you know what I'm going to do with this? What? I'm going to put it away for a little nest egg for us. Ain't interested in birds. Let's hatch it now, chicken. <laughs> And now, Susie Swan sings to us. Listen. My advice, says Susie, you like this brand new kind of lather, so be choosy. Swan gives you beauty lather, rich as cream. Your skin stays soft as any dream, and fresh as dew. I swan, do you? Says Susie. Yes, Susie Swan, and what a bath you get with Swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather. Why, it makes every bath a real pleasure. Sure, it's a pleasure the way Swan's new kind of beauty lather feels against your skin. So soft, so gentle, soft as a cloud. And it's a pleasure, too, the way white floating Swan cleanses your skin. Gently, yet so thoroughly, you step from the tub with your skin fairly glowing with cleanliness. And you'll love the way Swan's new kind of beauty lather rinses away. So completely, your skin doesn't feel all over-soaped. Instead, it's left radiantly fresh. And ladies, no other soap gives you this wonderful new kind of beauty lather because no other soap has Swan's exclusive super-creamed blend. So make your baths a real pleasure with Swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather. Thing, but when you're in a hurry to get home, the distance always seems twice as long. Maybe I'm being a little overcautious, but I'd like to be home just so Richard's hundred dollars won't fall in the hands of Irma and Al by mistake. 
Gee, a hundred dollars. Wonder what Richard's gonna use it for. Take me out? Gee, as I walk along, I get a warm glow just thinking about him. What a wonderful guy. It's too bad he has such a limited vocabulary. Seems he just can't say, Jane, will you be mine? But leap year's coming, and so help me, I'm gonna have a speech ready for January the 1st. Think I'll rehearse it right now. Let's see, I'll say, good evening, honey. And then I'll say, sweetheart, will you marry me? Sorry, lady, I already got five kids. Try the other side of the street. <laughs> me. I, I'm sorry. Well, after that, I stopped talking out loud and hurried home. I opened the door and called Irma. Irma! Oh, they're gone. Well, I guess I'll just wait around until Richard's secretary arrives with $100. Well, here's the bank, Al. I think I'll deposit my $100 reward. Chicken, I'm a little disappointed in you. I, I didn't think you'd be so cruel. Cruel? Yeah, you know what they say, your best friend is the dollar. Well, is it right to take all those nice friends and lock them up like criminals? <laughs> Gee, Al, I, I never thought of it that way. Well, what do you think I ought to do with the money? Well, Chicken, if you really want to look at it honestly, that hundred dollars isn't yours to keep. It's yours to enjoy. Its purpose is to reward you. To make you happy. Now, does going out with me and having a good time make you happy? Yes. Uh, yeah. And you figured it all out by yourself. Oh, yes, Al. You know, when we think together, we're a great team. Yeah. <laughs> sort of a Svengali and Trilby. Huh? Uh, what I mean, Chicken, is I lead the way and you back me up. <laughs> you understand? Oh, sure. You're the engine and I'm the caboose. <laughs> Choo-choo, Chicken. Get out that hundred bucks and let's go. Come in. Hello, Jane. Oh, hello, Richard. You're a little early. Your hundred dollars hasn't arrived yet. Well, that's funny. I called the office and they said Peggy left with the money over an hour ago. Oh, well, well, it could have been delivered while I was out, but I don't see it any place, and I know that Irma wouldn't take anything that wasn't hers. Well, Jane, maybe I'd better go back to the office and check up. Richard? Why are you staring like that? What are you thinking? Uh, oh, nothing. Don't uh, lie, Richard. You're thinking exactly the same thing I'm thinking. <laughs> Where do Irma and Al fit into this thing? Oh, now, please, Jane, I'm not making any accusations. It's just that, well, while I'm generally nervous when they're around, but well, when they're not, I get panicky. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard, do you think Irma would take money that doesn't belong to her and spend it? Oh, of course not, but... Why, come in. How do you do? I'm Mrs. McLean's secretary. Yes? I've come for the handbag. I beg your pardon? The handbag. My employer described it over the phone for you. She did? Of course. Now, may I have it? This may come as a shock, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> My dear young lady, I'm here to claim the pocketbook you found and give you the reward. Now, where is it? R Richard, would you please tell her oh, that I... Oh, you don't have to tell me anything. I know what's happened. You had a change of heart. After looking at the contents of the bag, you decided to keep it. Well, it won't work, lady, and that goes for your accomplice, too. I beg your pardon. And I'm going to sit right here until I get that handbag. Well, there she sits. One eye on me and one eye on Richard. I don't know how to describe the expression on her face, but she could very easily be Peter Lorre with a wig. <laughs> what this is all about is just beyond me, and to top it off, I'm beginning to feel guilty. Richard is shifting from one foot to the other and looking at me as though I'm a criminal. I'm trying to look back at him as if I'm not. Oh, Irma. Irma, wherever you are, won't you and Al please come back? We're trapped by Sitting Bull. <laughs> Please come in. Oh, hello, Peggy. Oh, hello, Mr. Ryan Lander. I've been trying to get in touch with you. Why? Well, I don't mean to be impudent, but does this handbag belong to you? I should say it doesn't. That's the handbag my employer sent me for. So you didn't know anything about it, huh? Now, just a minute, madam. I... Pardon me. Am I intruding? Oh, Professor Kropotkin. Oh, a professor, huh? 
You people have a better setup here than Murder Incorporated. Please, uh, uh, Professor, can't you help us clarify this thing? You see, this woman accuses us of stealing somebody's handbag, and Richard's hundred dollars are missing, and I... I, I Professor, I don't like the expression on your face. <laughs> I feel a little sick. Jenny, wait until you hear what I have to say. You'll have a relapse. <laughs> Here, lady, take your handbag. Now you're being sensible. Goodbye. <coughs> Professor, if you know anything, please tell us. So, Janie, it's simple. One, Irma found the handbag. Two, somebody brought her $100. Three, she thought it was a reward. Four, she's out spending it without. Mr. Rhinelander, I'm awfully sorry. No, it wasn't but your I... fault, Peggy. You go on back to the office. I'll see you later. All right. Goodbye. Oh, really? How could Irma make such a mistake? Janie, please, don't be so shocked. It's not such an impossible mistake, considering the fact that Irma has always believed the Flatiron Building is a place to take her laundry. <laughs> yeah, but, Professor, it's Richard's money. No, that's all right, Jane. It's just one of those things. No, no, Richard. The money was delivered here, and it's my responsibility. And besides, when Irma finds out what she's done, it'll just break her heart. Richard, we've just got to stop them before they spend it all. Well, where do we look for them? Simple. Where would any normal person go? I don't know. Well, all we got to do is to find out where any normal person will go, and we'll go in the opposite direction. <laughs> Gee, let me think a minute. Let's see, there's the opera, the art museum, Carnegie Hall, and... Of course, Coney Island. Come on, let's go. <laughs> That was fun. I just love the merry-go-round. Let's go around again. All right, chicken. The night is still young. Sure, Al. We haven't even started to spend my hundred dollars yet. <laughs> well, Richard, Coney Island's an awful big place. Where do we start? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. Well, let's ask that man by the scales. Uh, uh, pardon me, mister. Oh, sorry. We don't guess ladies' weights anymore. Them long skirts is throwing us. <laughs> oh, well, I, I don't want my weight guest. I want to know if you've seen a blonde girl with a fellow with shifty eyes. Uh, yeah, yeah, come to think of it, I saw him get on a merry-go-round. You did? Yeah, I remember because most people look dizzy when they get off. She looked that way when she got on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's her, all right. Come on, Richard, we're on the trail. <laughs> Richard, I think we've picked up their trail. I'll give you two to one that Irma just left the archery range. How do you know? Four people just walked by with arrows sticking in them. <laughs> Come on, let's ask the man here, right here at the refreshment stand. All right. Oh, uh, pardon me, sir, but did a blonde girl and a fellow in a gray suit stop here for refreshments? Refreshments? Ten bottles of root beer, six mission orange, three seven-up, five hot dogs, three hamburgers, and two taffy apples. All that? Yep. Now, let's see, what did the girl have? <laughs> never mind, never mind, that's them Come on, Richard Oh, no, oh, look, there they are Going into the crazy house Let's hurry Oh, Al, isn't it fun here in the crazy house? These tricky mirrors are a scream Look how skinny I look <laughs> And you look so fat and sloppy I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm sorry, lady. I, I thought it was looking glass. <laughs> Come on, chicken. Let's try the echo chamber. Oh, it's so dark in here. Yeah. Watch this. This is Al. This is Al. Oh, gee, let me try it. Hello. Hello. This is Irma. This is Jane. <laughs> oh, gee, I broke it. Chicken, I think your echo is being followed. Irma. Oh, Irma, thank goodness I found you. Oh, hello, Jane. Happy anniversary. Never mind that, never mind that. Before I explain everything, will you answer me one question? How much money do you have left of that $100? $102. $102? How come? Well, Al's got such a talent for counting out change. The other 
evening, I noticed Irma doing something very strange, even for Irma. And I said, uh, pardon me for asking, but why have you put a compass on top of those cakes of swan soap? And Irma said, well, winter is here, Jane, and you know how birds like to fly south, and I don't want our swans to get lost. <laughs> well, Jane, no matter what Irma says, she wouldn't be without white floating swan soap for her baths. And there's plenty of reason why a lot of women feel the same way. Now, you see, Swan gives you a brand new kind of beauty lather. Yes, a new kind of beauty lather that's soft and rich, that you smooth onto your skin like whipped cream. A new kind of lather that whisks away dirt, leaves your skin glowingly fresh and clean. And Swan's wonderful new kind of beauty lather means a wonderful new after-a-bath feeling, too. Yes, your skin is left soft and smooth, not all tight and over-soaked, because Swan rinses away so completely. So... How about trying Swan's new kind of beauty lather yourself? You'll like it for your bath. Well, everything turned out better than I expected. Richard has his hundred dollars back, and me... I'm in bed, and although the mattress isn't moving, I'm still spinning from that trip to Coney Island. Oh, Jane, you know, after Al and I left the merry-go-round, I went to the fortune tellers. Oh, you had your mind read? Yes, and then the man gave me my money back. I don't know why. <laughs> well, Irma doesn't know why, and Al doesn't know why, but you and I know why, don't we? <laughs> but we won't tell my friend Irma. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lieber Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Folks, next Monday evening, tune in an hour earlier over most of these same stations for the Lux Radio Theater. And then stay tuned to listen to... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Hans Conried was Professor Kropotkin. Mary Wilson can soon be seen in the Eagle Lion release, Linda Be Good. Ladies, listen... The shortage of fats and oils is still very serious, and it's worldwide. So please keep on saving every single drop of used kitchen fat. Your butcher will pay you for every pound. Frank Bingman speaking. Spry with cake improver. Spry with cake improver. It's news to sing about. Spry with Cake Improver gives lighter, finer, richer tasting cakes than any other type shortening. For no other type shortening has Spry's marvelous Cake Improver. So for lighter, more delicious cakes that stay fresh longer, try... Spry with Cake Improver. Spry with Cake Improver. Tune in again to my friend Irma next Monday evening at this same time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Thank you.